Grip socks are great, and now they're even better with Pure Grip Socks Pro. Better fit, moisture wicking, amazing comfort, and all the extra grip you need. Choose from 10 different colors for just $16.99 a pair at puregripsocks.com. So you don't have $250 to spend on the latest Vapor 15 Elite. Well, you're in luck because Nike make this boot right here, the Zoom Mercurial Vapor 15 Pro, a football boot that retails for significantly less at $140, which still isn't cheap. I would say $140 still falls into the premium range as far as football boots go, but as you can see, from the bottom and even the upper, they don't actually look that different from the top end model. And when it comes to objective performance characteristics, they really aren't. Not even kidding, if this was presented to me as the Vapor 15 Elite, I'm not sure that I would question it. And I realize how good that sounds. There's probably a bunch of you already thinking to yourselves, I'm gonna pass on the Elite, save the money, and just go for a pair of pros. That might be the right decision for a lot of people. But what I wanna focus on in today's video is what the differences actually are between the pros and the Elites, not just in terms of objective performance characteristics, because in that area, I don't think they're separated all that much, but in terms of feel and overall, overall experience, there is a very big difference between the two. I'm going to point out what that is in this review, including how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around. And if you are interested in a pair of Vapor 15 Pros, I almost called them 14s, for yourself, you can pick them up below their normal retail price by way of some exclusive SR4U coupon codes by checking out the first link down below. And if you guys enjoy the takedown model reviews, want to see more of them on the channel, don't forget to drop a like on this video and make sure you subscribe along with hitting that little bell notification so you don't miss out on my reviews of all the latest football boots of 2022. Starting off with the upper, unlike the Elite model which features Vapor Posit Plus, what you'll find on the pros is what they're calling Nike skin, which pretty much just refers to the polyurethane top layer which you will also find on the Vapor Posit Plus upper of the Elite. But if you're familiar with that upper, you're probably looking at this one and saying to yourself, it's the same chevron pattern, it's the same speed cage reinforcement. Internally, it's still lined with kind of like a textile material. It doesn't have a standalone nylon or microfiber adding bulk or thickness. It's one of those uppers that feels pretty well identical to what you're gonna find on the top end model, minus maybe a slight bit of softness. This has a slightly more rigid feel, but honestly, Honestly, once the boots are broken in, it's almost impossible to tell a difference. And on the ball, the touch is thin. It's giving you that premium barefoot feel at a fraction of the price. Again, if these were put on my feet and I was told that this was the Elite model, I really wouldn't question the quality of this upper because it feels like something Nike would put on a top end mercurial. What does feel and look less premium when compared to the Elite is the elasticated knit material that you have kind of along the edges of the opening as well as across the top of the foot. It just doesn't have as much stretch to it. It's a little bit of a harder feeling type of material. And I also really dislike how thin it is along this little section right here. Maybe it's hard to come across in the video, but it's borderline see-through. And if someone got you with their studs in this spot, I'm almost guaranteeing that they would rip. However, if that were to happen, that's what Nike's warranty program is for. So it's not something that I would worry too much about. I also don't like the kind of mock collar that this has. It's almost like they tried to make it a mid-cut football boot, but they offer a super fly variation of this tier of Mercurial. So you can get a mid-cut one if you want it. So I'm not sure why they're trying to make the Vapor kind of look a mid-cut here. Nonetheless, it doesn't get in the way. I just think it's a little bit goofy looking. And you'll also notice, and it's even more notable noticeable when the boots are on feet that the laces are positioned kind of more towards the outside of the foot. So you're left with more lacing area across the top where it kind of just ends up looking like your feet are wider when in fact the lacing system is actually just set a little bit lower down the sides, which arguably makes for a better overall fit when the laces are tied tight. Again, in terms of fit and overall feel, there is really not a lot of difference between this and the Elites. However, and this is perhaps a deal breaker for a lot of people, you do not get Nike's signature ACC technology on the pros like you do on the Elite. So in the event of a natural disaster, these will not provide as much grip on the ball. Moving to the rear, of course, low cut design being that this is the Vapor, you have an internal plastic heel counter, again, pretty similar to what you'll find on the Elites. The heel lining material and design is almost like the Elites. It's slightly different, but honestly different in ways that truthfully don't matter. It's a microfiber material with kind of a strip of padding in the midsection that is just enough to feel 
feel comfortable and help to lock your heel in place. Unlike a lot of takedown models, these seem to have a nice deep fit in the heel, not that shallow sensation that a lot of cheaper football boots can have. And then the insole, fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. Pretty standard mesh liner on top, single layer of this gray foam. But you'll notice this little cutout here in the heel, which is really where we're gonna to come to the key difference between the pros and the elites. And that is the inclusion of a zoom unit underneath your heel rather than the three quarter length of the forefoot like you'll find on the elites. And for those of you that saw my review of the Vapor 15 Elite, you know that I'm a huge fan of this new three quarter length zoom unit. Not so much for its benefits in terms of performance like Nike claims, because I really don't think there are performance benefits from it, but from a comfort and fluidity perspective, the running shoe like comfort that you get in a pair of football boots that is as light and responsive as the Vapor 15 and Superfly 9 Elite is, is super impressive and something that I've never experienced in a pair of football boots. With the Pro, you simply do not get that. These feel like a regular pair of football boots. However, for those of you that are mercurial traditionalists and could do without the zoom unit underneath the majority of your foot, you might actually prefer the more raw traditional feel, dare I say, of the Vapor 15 Pro. And I'm sure there's gonna be people that are upset that Nike makes such a big deal out of the Air branding, even on the Pro model, when it's just a zoom unit underneath your heel in a pair of football boots that realistically, you buy to be on your toes. The zoom unit that's featured here, in fairness to Nike, is basically what they used to have on their top end models when zoom was being pushed, like on the Nike Air Tiempos, like on the Air Zoom T90 models. So it is something that 10, 12, 14 years ago, you'd get on a $200 plus dollar football boot, but you're now getting it on a $140 option where I don't think it's really that noticeable in terms of the overall experience. They could have not included this and I think the football boots would have been just as good, but given the option to have it or not have it, I definitely would have included it in the football boots. It's just a bit of a bummer that again, they're making the Air Zoom such a big part of the branding when realistically, unless you're buying the Elite model, it really is a minor part of the overall experience. Which brings us to the base of the football boot where you'll notice that the sole plate and sud pattern, at least with the FG variation, is pretty well identical to what you're going to find on the top end model, which is a very good thing. This feels like something that should be on a nearly $300 football boot, but at the $140 price point, which we haven't gotten from Nike as of late, but once upon a time, they did used to feature what was basically the top end sole plate on a takedown model Mercurial. Glad to see that back within the Mercurial range, and I think it benefits the overall experience of these football boots and the performance characteristics in a major way. This feels like something that you'd get on a top end boot. It moves with your foot nicely. It has that slight anatomic shaping to it. And the FG stud pattern, while different from the last several generations of Mercurial, is still super aggressive, providing plenty of bite when pushing off in just about any direction. Which brings us to the weight. Which one's lighter, the Elite or the Pro? We're about to find out using a scale, both in the same size, 9.5 US. We'll start off with the $250 Elite model. They weigh in at 6.8 ounces, the equivalent of 192 grams. Remember those numbers, and we'll throw the pros on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at 7.9 ounces, the equivalent of 223 grams. So from a weight perspective, the Pro is definitely heavier by a significant amount. These definitely feel lighter and all the extra weight seems to be focused in and around the heel. And that has to do not so much with the sole plate on the outside, but the way that it's reinforced on the inside. Because of the zoom unit on the Elite model, there is no traditional sole plate construction where this one does not have that same benefit, which is where the extra weight comes into play. It's not that they're heavy, but they're certainly not as light as the Elites. On feet, the Vapor 15 Pro feels like a pair of high-end Mercurials. There's really no other way to say it. Of course, there's a major difference when compared to the Elites in that you don't have that zoom unit underneath the balls of your feet that gives you such a unique feel. You can sort of feel the zoom unit underneath your heel if you 
you really kind of rock back on them. But in general, even when running, it's not something that I found to be particularly noticeable. What I do think is a significant difference from the Elites, however, is that this Pro variation has not undergone the same changes in terms of the overall shape. So if anything, these have a little bit less volume and a little bit less width, making for a tighter overall feel, which for those that were upset that the latest Mercurials, at least the Elite models, got a little bit wider, the Pros have not. They do fit that little bit tighter, but that's not so they still won't work for most foot types. If you've worn Mercurials in the past, you shouldn't have any issues with these. As long as you like a tight fit, they'll work for most foot types, as long as your feet aren't excessively wide, of course. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit and the length is perfect. So just like every other Mercurial, if you are looking to order a pair, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, if you're on the market for a pair of new Mercurials and you can't decide between the Elites and the Pros, I really feel like the decision is quite simple. If you want to feel and experience the new Air Zoom tech and it sounds like something that you would be into, by all means, spend the money on the Elites. I think it's well worth it. Whereas if you don't care about that new technology and you kind of want that more raw traditional feel that the Mercurial has had on offer for the last 14 generations, then by all means save the money because objectively the Vapor 15 Pro is every bit as good as the Elite.